All right, everybody, here it is. Today, we got the drop every single house for Halloween Horror Nights 32 here in Orlando. All the scare zones, all the IPs, all the originals, everything is out. And this video, we're going to be breaking down everything we know, everything we see, talking about it, getting excited. I have a hype list coming at the end of this video, so you want to stay tuned for that. So I guess the best place to start is with our IPs, because we got three IP announcements, making is quite unusual because typically when we get a drop it's all the originals and all the scare zones you know the original content but today we got three IPs announced or I guess two IPs announced one we're getting a little more details on which is Chucky um so let's start with Chucky we have a haunted house called Chucky ultimate kill count I'm excited that that's in the name I really wanted the kill count to be a part of the house in some way so I'm excited to see how that's gonna function here and the description says Chucky the serial killer doll is back for another gore fest he He's hijacked his own haunted house with all kinds of bloody hijinks. You and your friends must try to survive his ultimate kill count. So yeah, pretty basic, but just a few more details for this Chucky house, and that's pretty refreshing considering the last time we really got anything about this house was back at Halloween last year. And then as far as the new IPs go, we have our Universal Monsters house titled Universal Monsters Unmasked. Along with some really, really cool key art, we got this little description reading, Descend into the Paris Catacombs, where you and your squad will face a new horde of monsters, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, the Phantom of the Opera, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and the Invisible Man. So all these characters have been rumored at one point or another to be coming to this house. So I'm excited to see all of them in here. We're raising the stakes from Legends Collide with three monsters to now having four of them. And based on this concept art, we're seeing some pretty gnarly designs for these characters, so I'm really excited to see how they are portrayed in this house inside of the Paris Catacombs, which is a setting we haven't seen in quite a while. And the final IP we have is an interesting one, uh, The Exorcist Believer. So yeah, we've kind of talked about The Exorcist being up in the air a few times before, but now it's official. The Exorcist Believer specifically is coming to this event. We just got the posters and trailer for Exorcist Believer this past week. And we did get a little teaser for this house, which features Drew listening to the podcast girl from that Do Not Watch video. And he's kind of, you know, running, listening to this podcast, sees the doll on the ground, and we sort of see him being possessed and seeing the two girls from the film. There's not a lot to break down in this trailer because we haven't actually seen the Exorcist Believer movie yet. But I'm sure once we see the movie and the house, a lot of this stuff will get into better context. My only worry for this one is just because the movie isn't out yet. So I wonder what they're really going to do. Are they going to be in? integrating some scenes from the original movie to kind of break things up, add some familiarity, because this movie isn't coming out until more than halfway through the event. But the description here says, two missing girls have been found with no memory of what happened to them, but wherever they went, the ultimate evil has returned with them. But yeah, we have Chucky, Ultimate Kill Count, The Last of Us, Stranger Things 4, Universal Monsters Unmasked, and Exorcist Believer as our five IPs for this year. However, we also got our five originals today, as I mentioned. And I guess starting off, we have Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins. So yes, we are getting Dr. Oddfellow coming to this event. The description reads, your soul is a price he's willing to pay. You won't be able to resist going inside Dr. Oddfellow's menacing menagerie of twisted oddities. But the price for you and your friends is steep. The cost of your souls to feed his immortal power. Right away, we kind of see this is sort of the origin story of Oddfellow, like we had been guessing. In the key art, we actually get a good look of what Oddfellow is going to look like, vastly different than what a lot of people thought. And in here in the background, we actually see some horoscope signs, which will be important for one of our scare zones coming up. I'm just super excited to finally get confirmation that Dr. Oddfellow is going to be appearing at this event. However, I'm just as excited for the next one, which is Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate. It's official. We are getting Dueling Dragons to come to this event. The ride from Islands of Adventure is getting a haunted house at Halloween Horror Nights this year. And I love that they chose the Choose Thy Fate as the subtitle for this house, just adding in that ride lore. The description reads, two warlocks of great power were turned into dragons after trying to take Merlin's spell book. Now you and your friends are caught in their epic battle. You must choose a path and a victor. So it sounds like this could be one of our dual path haunted houses. We have not had one of those in a very, very long time. And like Oddfellow, I'm just excited to see this thing confirmed. We're finally getting Fire and Ice, Dueling Dragons back into Universal. Next up, we have Yeti Campground Kills. The description reads, you and your friends are about to venture into a 1950s campground overrun by huge menacing yetis who rip apart anyone who get in their way. You must flee to the ranger tower to escape. 
Now, based on the look of this and the 1950 setting, I think this is going to be a little more of a campier take, no pun intended. I feel like this can be our sort of funny over the top house for this year, much like how Bugs was last year, which also took place in the 1950s. It feels really pulpy and really kind of cheesy in the best ways possible. I'm actually pretty interested in this one. I wasn't really excited for it at first, but now seeing the information, seeing the key art, I'm really getting more hyped for this house. The next one we have is the darkest deal. This is our rumored crossroads house. Well, not rumored anymore. I guess it's confirmed our Crossroads Robert Johnson themed house. The description reads, Blues musician Pine Straw Spruce will have to face the music after meeting with the Collector and trading his soul for musical glory. You and your squad learn the terrible price of fame. So yeah, this is the sort of devil went down to Georgia, Crossroads, guy selling his soul to the devil, or in this case, the Collector. I really like the key art for this. I think this will be a really good sort of period style house. I think it's going to be something really unique and one I'm also looking forward to. And finally, we have Blood Moon Dark Offerings. This was the biggest wild card throughout all of speculation season, and now we get a little more detail as to what this house is going to be. It says, in a colonial era village, moon worshippers witness a blood moon at their fall festival. They take it as a sign to hunt down any non-followers, including you and your scream squad. So I'm actually kind of more excited for this one. This was one I wasn't really super looking forward to, but now again, seeing key art, seeing the logo, seeing all this stuff, getting a little more excited for it. However, Haunted houses are not the only thing we got we got our scare zones as well and i love this about these scare zones they all tie back to dr oddfellow making him the icon of this year's event we start out with dr oddfellow's collection of horror so this is going to be our dr oddfellow scare zone to tie into our dr oddfellow house dr oddfellow will lure you into halloween horror nights with a promise of immortality as he lifts the veil on all the horrors to come you'll soon realize you may not even survive survive the night. The next one we have is Dark Zodiac, another one we've been talking about for a little while. It says Dr. Oddfellow has entered a dark dimension to harness the power of the Zodiac and live forever. He twists the signs into malevolent beings who foretell your doom. As his star rises, yours falls. I think this is a really unique take for this, as it does bring something new to the table. It doesn't just rely on the Zodiac theme, but ties it back into Dr. Oddfellow. The next one we have is Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror. We are finally returning to the Jungle of Doom after so long. I'm so excited. It says, in the 1920s, Dr. Oddfellow ventured deep into the darkest jungle, performing horrific experiments on nature. Now his monstrous creations are running amok and are coming after you. Looks like we're going to be seeing some mutated beasts in the jungle, so not just normal animals, which I think could be really, really fun. And I'm excited to, again, see how this ties into the Dr. Oddfellow lore. Next up, we have the one that a lot of people have been talking about recently, Vamp 69, Summer Blood. At a 60s music fest in small New York town, you'll jam to popular bands with fellow concert goers until Dr. Oddfellow unleashes vicious vampires on the audience. They're out for your blood. Now, this is the most straightforward of the scare zones we've seen so far. I'm expecting this to follow pretty closely to the vamp formula, which is not bad. I like the vamp scare zones. And finally, we have Shipyard 32, Horrors Unhinged. Obviously a reference to HHN 32, and it says, enter a 1940s San Francisco shipping yard full of mysterious crates and cages bearing Dr. Oddfellow's symbol. Beware, his nightmarish oddities have now escaped, spreading fear and chaos in their wake. So yeah, we don't really know much of what the actual characters of the scare zone are going to be. Are they going to tie into the other scare zones? Are they going to be completely different? Only time will tell, but I'm excited to see this, especially again, because it ties back to Oddfellow. That just makes me really, really happy. Now that's all for the houses and scare zones. But there were a few minor announcements for other offerings at HHN 32 that I did want to cover real quick. For one, we are getting the return of Nightmare Fuel and Nightmare Fuel Revenge Dream. It says the show that sparked your darkest dreams has reignited. Let your nightmares burn out of control as the pyro and aerial performers fire you up to the beat of metal and electronica. Nightmare Fuel, it's a staple. I'm not surprised it's coming back to the event, but I am hopeful that it'll be something new, something fresh, maybe a little more unique than Wildfire was, but still keeping that Nightmare Fuel charm. We did get some news about the Halloween Horror Nights tribute store. We saw earlier this week there was an Easter egg dropped in the Jurassic Park tribute store, hinting the comic book theme and the possible return to the New York location. Well, that has been confirmed as it says, guests can enter a mysterious NYC comic book shop and experience the tribute to terror by stepping into the pages of this original terrifying horror comic. 
really, really excited for this. I love comics. I love horror comics. I love that whole aesthetic. And I'm really excited to see that angle for the tribute store. I thought the dark ride concept last year was really fun. It does state that the dead coconut club is coming back this year. I'm really excited to see that. I didn't have time to make it into the dead coconut club last year. So I'll definitely be making a trip there to make a video for you all. They also have a brand new Peacock's Halloween horror bar, which will feature themed libations within an ominous nightclub vibe, photo ops, and more. Cabana Bay will be getting a Chucky's playground themed photo illusion experience. They had the Universal Monsters Gallery of Legends experience last year, which will be coming back to the other Universal hotels. And they also had the jacked up experience and the Stranger Things experience at Cabana Bay in the past. So excited to see Chucky get some love in that fashion. And finally, this is a pretty big one as this is an all new event add-on. We have the Taste of Terror, which basically allows you to preview a, hopefully a good amount of the Halloween Horror Nights food items uh, a few weeks before the event begins. From August 10th to August 26th, you can pay $160, get access to some of the food and drinks, including alcohol, as well as some souvenir cups and a photo op. I don't think I'm gonna be doing this because $160 is pretty steep especially when you can just buy the food in a couple weeks anyway but i do think it's an interesting thing to mention if you're interested in that sort of experience if you're an hhn foodie but don't necessarily want to come into the event then that option is there for you now everything has been announced we've gone over what's coming to halloween horror nights this year and i think it's perfect time to make my initial hype list of what i'm most excited for for this event Really, it's pretty hard because I'm excited for everything that's coming to this year's event. I know it can be easy to say, oh yeah, I'm just excited for everything, but really everything I think has promised this year. I think we're looking at one of the strongest original and IP lineups we've seen in quite a while. So starting with the houses and at number 10, we have Blood Moon Dark Offerings. Now this one is purely just because I'm not too sure of what this house actually is gonna be. Obviously we now know it's like moon worshipers and I think that could be pretty interesting, but I'm just not 100% on what's going to be happening in this house. It just something has to be at the bottom and this is it. But moving up to number nine, we have the Exorcist Believer kind of for the same reason. All we really have to go with on the Exorcist Believer is that first teaser trailer. And while I watch the trailer sort of looking for set pieces that could be found at HHN, a lot of the times when they do houses that release before the movie that they're based on, they don't really work as well because they can't really nail the plot points as much. So I hope they really go more with the vibe in this one or again, maybe inserting some scenes in the original film. I've never done The Exorcist, so I have no prior opinion on that house. So in that regard, I am excited to visit this one, but just not as excited as I am for others. Next, we have number eight, and I feel like this is gonna make a lot of people upset, but I'm putting number eight as The Last of Us. While I think this has a lot of promise and I think will deliver some really great sets and scares, this could quite possibly be the scariest house this year. I'm just not the biggest Last of Us fan out there, and The Last of Us is definitely on that bottom half half of ones I'm super excited for. But again, I have hope that this will be something really interesting and I hope it really turns it around. I know this is one a lot of people are looking forward to. Next up, we have Yeti Campground Kills. If you would have asked me a little while ago where this would have gone, I probably would have put this underneath The Last of Us. But I think what kind of edges it out is just the possibility for some unique scares. Yeti Terror of the Yukon was a really unique house in the way they did scares, the different types of scares and locations. And I think with this one taking that 1950s setting, maybe doing a little more of a campier approach, I'm a little more interested interested in it. So I think this one sits pretty comfortably at number seven. Number six, we have another one of our IPs, our original IP for this year, Chucky Ultimate Kill Count. I've been excited for this one since I actually watched the sci-fi show earlier this year. And I'm really interested to see how they're gonna change up the sci-fi series. It does seem like they're not just gonna strictly follow what's going on in the show, which is really, really refreshing. Seems like they're gonna be adding a little bit of their own spin, kind of like what they did with the Revenge of Chucky Scare Zone back at 28. And I'm just excited to see Chucky return to the event, see what kind of fourth wall breaks we could see, and all that jazz. So this one's gonna sit pretty comfortably at number six. And beginning the top half of our list, we have The Darkest Deal. I've been a big supporter of this concept since it was rumored a few months ago. So I'm excited to see it actually come into fruition and I'm really, really interested to see what kind of scares they're gonna pull off here. I'm really also interested in how the collector is gonna be designed, this new character we're gonna be seeing here, as well as just the period set pieces. I love period houses. You're gonna see that later on in this list. And I think this is a great addition
addition to the HHN catalog, a setting we haven't really seen yet done in a really, really interesting way. So number five, we have Darkest Deal. Now, number four, we have our Universal Monsters IP, Universal Monsters Unmasked. These houses have been great in the past, and looking at this lineup of characters, I'm just foreseeing the kind of double, triple, quadruple scares we'll be seeing, the distinct set pieces within the Paris Catacombs, the character design, especially because a few of these we've never actually seen, like the Invisible Man is one of my favorite Universal Monsters. We've never seen him come to the event, at least here in Orlando yet. And of course, revisiting the Phantom that we all know and love. And at number three, we have our final IP, Stranger Things 4. I talked about it in the announcement video. I'm super, super excited for this one because I love Stranger Things 4 as a season. Really, really curious how they're gonna execute this house, what scenes they're gonna pick. I kind of talked about this all in the announcement video. So if you wanna hear my full thoughts on Stranger Things, I'll link that video in the cards. And now we're down to the final two. Which two is it gonna be from HHN and Universal lore? Which one is gonna reign supreme? I'm putting number two at Dr. Oddfellow Twisted Origins. I am a huge HHN historian. I love the history of HHN. I love the legacy. And I'm super excited to see Dr. Oddfellow make his debut at the event this year. I love how this house is possibly gonna tie into everything else. And maybe even we could be seeing Jack and or Chance. I think that's definitely a possibility here. So obviously I'm super, super excited for this one. And it's sitting at number two on the hype list. And finally, for number one, we have Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate. Since this has been discussed and rumored, this has been number one on my hype list. It makes me super, super excited to the kind of effects we could see, the kind of sets we could see, the kind of Easter eggs we could see here. This will be the house I am most likely going to first this year. And finally, I talked about the houses. I gotta talk about my hype list for the scare zones too. At number five, we have Shipyard 32. This one we just, again, don't know too much about. Next up, we we have Dark Zodiac at number four. I'm more excited for this now that I know the Oddfellow connection than I was before, honestly. I'm very curious to see how they execute this. This is supposed to be going in Hollywood. I'm really most excited for how they represent the different Zodiac signs. Will they pull some inspiration from Singapore Zodiacs? We're not too sure. But regardless, I think this can be a really, really fun zone and a fan favorite for sure. Next up, we have Dr. Oddfellow's Collection of Horror at number three. This looks like our basic table of Content scare zone, but I'm hoping we actually get Dr. Oddfellow in this zone himself, much like the Pumpkin Lord last year. I would love to see that. Maybe he does a little show. Maybe he actually talks to the guests. I know Pumpkin Lord kind of did that, but they had him on a rotation. So maybe we could have Oddfellow actually speaking to the guests. I think that would be really fun. And I think that'd be a great way to set up this scare zone. Have Oddfellow himself lure you into Halloween Hornets, like it says in the description. Next up for number two, we have the Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror. We haven't really had a Jungle of Doom sequel in quite a while. While. So I'm excited that we're going to be getting one with this. Like the Zodiac, I'm really excited to see what the creatures are going to look like, especially if they're like mutated animals, maybe different sort of beasts. Maybe these are like animal human hybrids. And especially considering the sort of scare zone construction that we've been seeing around there, I'm excited to see how these temple sets are going to work. But regardless, Jungle of Doom is sitting at number two. And number one has to be Vamp 69. The Vamp scare zones are some of the most beloved in HHN history. And the fact that we're going to be going to Woodstock, seeing this sort of a parody on the late 60s psychedelic rock scene. That in itself, even if you didn't tell me anything else, that would have worked for me. But yeah, Vamp 69 has definitely got to be number one. I mean, look at that stage. Anyway, that's it. I know this was kind of a long video, but we had a lot to talk about. We got all 10 of our haunted houses, all five of our scare zones, all of our shows. Let me know in the comments, what are you most excited to see at Halloween Horror Nights 32? I'm so excited that we know everything now. Announcement season is over. We finally have every everything announced so now it's just construction season for the next month or so and then we're at the event on opening night so i'm so excited um and if you like this video like hhn updates i know this one was a little more sporadic but i'm just super excited i've had a grin on my face recording this whole video um so if you do like this video like hhn updates things of that nature leave a like and subscribe to the channel more hhn videos to come obviously we're getting ready it's like crunch time before we get to september 1st so i hope you enjoyed this one i want to thank you for watching this video, I'm going to take a little mental break after this bomb was dropped on me. So I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.